welcome to back here to some Sal. I'm Buh. And I'm Tuh. <laughs> this is where it's going. <laughs> Just know it. So I promised that we would do a Neil Gaiman book today. Who Neil did you Gaiman, promise that to? You, actually. I was just like, hey, how would you feel about doing a Neil Gaiman book? Yeah, and after I read the Riot Act about what Neil Gaiman book? I know. Neil Gaiman and Greg Capullo's Angela. There's a lot to unpack about Angela because, of course... Really, it doesn't look like there's a lot to unpack. It looks like there's very little covering her. There is. Uh, she is quite scantily clad, just as the lawyers would ask Neil Gaiman in the deposition that Neil Gaiman had against Todd McFarlane over many things, including the ownership of Angela. Because, of course, Image Comics, co-founded by Todd McFarlane, was founded on the principle that those who work at Image, who make comic books, own their creations. Yeah. And lo, it is bequeathed. Yes. Should you work for... Should you work for Image Comics? For the lord and savior that is Todd McFarlane, <laughs> your creations will be your own unless Todd requires them. That's right. Uh, unless they become popular or Todd wants to monetize them. In or which I want to make uh, figures of them. Yes. In which case, you are a work for hire and you were not creating them for yourself. You were just being contracted by Todd McFarlane to make a character. Uh, the courts decided no. <laughs> Neil Gaiman did at least co-own Angela. And inevitably, after many, many years, uh, Todd lost complete control. I believe he actually sold off the rest of his rights to Angela to Neil Gaiman, who then sold his rights of Angela to Marvel, who then wasted her. They did make some effort to make Angela work. It's just that Angela doesn't work in any other context than Spawn. You could make it work. Well, they still she works have hard it. for the money. That's true, she does. And you'll find out more about that in her solo miniseries, which was another significant point of contention for uh, Todd and Neil when this uh, series dropped. It was the I first mean, spinoff of Spawn. Considering that she comes from the Spawn universe and yes. Spawn is owned by Todd. Yes. Yeah, you could say that because of that dynamic mm -hmm. and the fact that she lives in that universe. Right. She is partially created because of Todd. Yeah, no. But Chapel killed Spawn, and Rob Liefeld owned Chapel, Lock, Stock, and Barrel yeah. for a time. There's a lot of questions about how this works. Well, Her there outfit. are no answers. To well, it. it works. Let me tell you. Like, oh like, yeah, it's like she it's, was a big deal. It's being held up by spit and hope. It's prayer. Sure. So uh, no, I beg to differ because there are a lot of little boys praying it won't hold up. <laughs> Look it's at true. the size of her belt. Yeah. In this version, in this version it's fitting her. Like yeah. It's around her, and this mm -hmm. one is just like. Yeah, it's hanging off her yeah. hip. Capullo's going for broke. I mean, so, that thing would just fall off of her body. Yeah, but she's an angel, so it doesn't. Tiffany, it's falling off of her body right now. We're catching it mid-fall. Oh, okay. So I thought we're going to talk about Angela the miniseries, which is only three issues. I mean, we don't have to. No, but we're going to. Oh. And uh, I provided some context for Angela in these three Spawn comic books. We read one of them. Which those. she appeared in and or is referenced in. Okay. But these are the context you might need for the Angela miniseries. In Spawn number nine, Angela first appears, written by Neil Gaiman with art by Todd McFarlane. We introduce Angela as a character. If we've never talked about it, we'll talk about it right now. Uh, she just, she shows up. The first appearance of Angela introduces Medieval Spawn, which Neil Gaiman also felt he was completely entitled to owning as well. Uh, and we watch as Medieval Spawn is still a young, kind of like relatively new Spawn. He's uh, going to what he thinks is rescue a fair maiden, but is in fact Angela in disguise. Is he a and different then, Spawn? He is a Spawn of the... Like, is he a different person? Yeah, he's a different guy. Because okay. it's back in the day. It's back in the, 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 the realm of so, knights and So whatnot. it's not Al? No. <laughs> No, it's a it's an old Listen, it's, knight. I assumed he time traveled. My my understanding of Spawn is they're all Al because I don't know. Well, no, I, I thought so too. What? Even the horse is Al. He's he's wearing, he's got the Spawn suit thing. It's like a Ghost Rider. There's many different Spawns over the years. Oh, okay, that's all you had to say. Yeah, well, that's clearly what Spawn is. He's just How would he's just I know? a cool well, that's tattoo. That's bizarre because like I thought Mal Bolger was just like there. We're giving this one guy the Spawn ability. Yeah, this time. Yeah, Al Simmons. Yeah, that one time. But over the eras, I mean, Billy Kincaid, the child murderer from Spawn, is also a Spawn. 
Yes, there's spawns throughout time. So Angela kills Medieval Spawn, and we just we, we get a feel for like how cool and rad Does and she awesome like, she is. Like, Behold, it's me, Angela. Check it out. Behold I my look awesome bubage. Inc incredible. Yeah. You can never have this. And any of you men out there or ladies who think you can or want to comment on my scantily cladness, I'll kill you. The only thing you need to really know about Spawn Number Nine is Angela's introduced. Yes. When she first arrives on Earth in the present, she goes before this bureaucracy that Neil Gaiman is delighted to tread upon, which includes this older yet still attractive looking woman, angel, bureaucrat named Gabrielle. Gabrielle is like an, she's some kind of bureaucrat that works with like internal uh, heavenly and earthly affairs. She's like Gabriel, but not. Yeah. yeah. And like and we're getting like some maybe some good omens-ish stuff going on here. Yeah, yeah, but it's a lot more superficial in this. Okay. But uh, Angela has to present her hunting permit to Gabrielle in order to be allowed to hunt on Earth because apparently, you know, the universe is vast and we're not and just hunting. And you need a permit? Well, of course, she's a hunter. Yeah, there, the idea here, it was actually a relatively uh, well-trod idea that the eternal forces of heaven and hell are entirely bureaucratic. It's very much like Preacher or Good Omens or any other uh, metatextual religiosity book or comic of the early 90s that was like just looking to dunk on Judeo-Christian mythology. Remember, you're allowed to read three souls right. per your permit. And it doesn't really get into the specifics, thankfully. But all we need to know is that you require a hunting permit, you have to show it before an authority, and then you are given permission to do so. Uh, Angela gleefully accepts this permission. In the meantime, Spawn is interrogating a character that Neil Gaiman also invented and introduced into the Spawn universe named Cagliostro, or Cagliostro, depending on which issue you're reading because they spelled it wrong or differently in each issue. Uh, but these are essential and critical components to the Spawn mythos that Neil Gaiman contributes and expects to own and be able to receive residuals and royalties on. Uh, but Spawn is uh, yelling at Cog, and then Angela just shows up and then attacks Spawn and hits him with her fancy schmancy lance. Now, the lance is important to bring up because it is a plot point of the Angela miniseries we're gonna get into. But the lance is super important to the hunting rituals and uh, work of an angel or a well, seraphim's being. I assume she has to register her lance. I, I'm sure. serial number on the lance that I'm ties sure. it to her. You know, it's interesting. The serial number never really comes up, but like you'd think it would have helped her out. But uh, we see that it's explained in the medieval spawn segment, you know, under weaponry in this like, you know, in these snippets of a book that we'll never see. Because of course it would be written by Neil Gaiman and he would sue Todd McFarlane to get access to. Jesus, but Christ, it, it that gets, weapon is intricate. Yeah, no, well it's really important and special. Even though we'll only see it in one issue, ever. But the lance is like the last step to killing a hell spawn, because that's the, what spawn the is The last short for. step. Yeah, like well, you beat the crap out of first, them, use your weaponry. First, insult them. Yes, well, she does. Uh, and then third, take it out to a nice dinner. <laughs> Don't pay. Right. Oh. And then hit him with your lance. <laughs> now she will hit them with her lance and then blast them with the other end of the lance, which then sends a spawn into themselves. It basically transforms them into a two-dimensional being, and then they kind of splash into their own gigantic, oversized spawn cape. And then, while they're in this two-dimensional state, uh, she can hit them with the sharp end and they die. When she does this to our spawns, and this is the protagonist only nine issues, that does not happen. Instead, because I guess our spawn is a little more tenacious than the last spawn she killed, which in this suggestion is medieval spawn, uh, she goes to do the move, and then spawn pulls her into the cape with him. Showing and, her butt. Yes, it's egregious to be sure. But he also yells, you're in my world now, bitch. I mean, thankfully, we are not treated to any dialogue. It's We let the art speak for itself. Well, yeah, that's what he's yelling right there. Naturally. Well. And uh, so he frightens her so much, she just bails and then teleports back to heaven. Or his cloak stinks so much, she bails. I mean, either way, she's nonplussed. And so she leaves and Spawn pulls himself out of himself and then goes, hey, she left her lance behind. And then Cog warns him not to touch it, and he immediately pushes one of the buttons on it. 
Oh, there this. are buttons. Oh yeah, there's buttons. There's oh. there's there's gun ends. There's sharp points. There's special buttons and which, attachments. Which end lets her ride on it, where it stabs you in the neck and then she punches you in the face. <laughs> I think that's got to be the most nearest button okay. to her. But that transports Spawn into another plane of existence, or in this miniseries, as it explains, rewrites reality itself, and then uh, Spawn finds his way back to oh, the prime reality. Oh, that's this. Oh, and then he that's goes, the rewrite reality button. Uh, Oops. I should have marked that more clearly. Well, that, maybe it's the fact that Spawn uses the lance, but that's an angelic weapon that is used intrinsically to kill Hellspawn. A of Hellspawn which he never, is. Yeah, and he's never meant to touch it, and so when he does, it, it, it makes things into a book written by Dave Sim. Uh, but that book is really fun, I'm not going to get into it, but it is, it is just this really weird meta commentary on the comic book industry in 1992. Since Spawn is owned lock, stock, and barrel by Todd McFarlane, he is greater than any superhero that might be legally distinct from any recognizable superhero that is depicted through hands in this in this jail. I beg your pardon? These are all very new, unique, and I don't know who they are hands. No. Certainly, when this issue dropped, Wizard Magazine didn't do a contest where if you could name every hand, you would win free comic books. <sighs> okay, I gotta try. I sure did. Multiple times. I know all but one now. Crap. All right, Are so I got- Are those good? No, just the last two. <laughs> well, and the idea is that if they live long enough, they end up being bad, or at least that's what people expect. Um, but well, You live long enough, you see yourself become the villain. Naturally. But uh, yeah, Medieval Spawn's a good guy, or at least he would have been yeah, if really he wasn't immediately killed. Yeah, it does not endear killed. me to Angela. You're not really, she's the villain. She's a villain in the Spawn world. She's just also so popular that, as is comic book law, if you are a villain but still super popular, then you will not be a villain any longer. You go from anti-hero to full hero. What I can't stand is that I legitimately want to read this because Neil Gaiman wrote it, Uh huh. but I just don't care what's happening. I promise you it's not nearly as exciting as you think it might be. Okay. I think I got 17. Okay. Do I have to try? So her lance is crazy important. Yep. It does many things. It does many things that we don't really need to get into why or how. And she had a scare. She was frightened by Spawn, and so she left, and she left a lance behind. When Spawn returns after this self-indulgent thing, the lance is gone, but everything's back to normal. Or at least as normal as they can be for Spawn. Uh, the next time we even refer to Angela again is Spawn number 26, uh, in which Spawn is pulled into, I think it's just France, but uh, Gabrielle compels Spawn to join her, where she asks him if he remembers anything from the encounter with Angela, and if she took the lance with her when she fled. Spawn admits no. She, as I recall, she left it behind. Uh, Gabrielle is delighted by this because Gabrielle does not like Angela very much and is looking to stick it to her. Well, I mean, she left her lance behind. That's right, which you never do. And that's all the information you need. Okay. For so us to get into Angela numbers one uh, through three. Oh, we're, we're not just done? I'm assuming that Spawn is stitched up because Angela stabbed him in the face? No, he is stitched up because Batman threw a batarang at his face. This is from that? Well, no. Uh, it definitely is, but Todd also doesn't... Todd took a really long time off from Spawn to draw the Batman-Spawn crossover, or rather the Spawn-Batman crossover. Yeah. The last page reveal of the Batarang hitting Spawn is exactly as long as the shoelace stitching that Spawn has in his face. Clearly, McFarlane had every intention of letting the Batman Spawn crossover that he drew and, Mc and Frank Miller wrote be in canon. Be in canon. Uh, then he chose not to, and instead told a two-part story that was out of sequence in which Harry Houdini fights Spawn, and as a result, Spawn's face gets a similar looking scar that needs to be stitched up with a shoelace. As far as I'm concerned- Can you throw a card at him? No, it's magic. But it is, as far as I'm concerned, the Batarang. Cool, yeah, no, I'm on board for that. And the only reason why Spawn even has a shoelace stitched face in the first place, besides the in-canon reason, is because they want to sell action figures of the same version of Spawn, but with a different head that has a stitched up face. Uh, also, uh, Spawn chooses not to fix his face, even though he could, because of course he has the ticking clock element to his character. If he uses too much power, he'll die or go back to hell. Hey Tiffany, you want to see some images of the Spawn, uh, the Todd McFarlane toy line? 
Yes, in spawn number 26, you can actually see some behind the scenes photos of Todd Toys, later called McFarlane Toys, uh, manufacturing, I believe it's Spawn Alley and other similar playsets or figures in the Chinese factory. What's funny about that is that in the original printings of Angela, you can read in the letters page, which Neil Gaiman himself addresses and not Todd because Todd's too busy running his toy empire. They're like, um, I saw in one of your comics, there were photos of your warehouse in China making figures. Are they slaves? Neil was like, well, Todd, are they? Some like, people were asking. He did not defend him at all. He was just like, well, some folk want to know. And I greenlit that letter to be printed in this book for all time. Yeah, that's uh, that was a little unexpected. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and Todd's like, come on, look. Look at your toys being made. This is how I pass the savings on to you. <laughs> yeah. I still modeled them. Right. Some of that was made in house. Are we done with these now? Yeah, we're done with those. Okay, cool. So, will Spawn be in this book? Yeah, of course. What's the clock thing again? Spawn has a power meter. You know, he's got like four slots, nine, 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 nine. And then uh, if he uses his power, the clock drops down. When it hits zero, his time on Earth is over and he goes back to hell. That That's way he doesn't just like take over the world. If he uses all this power, he'll go to, he'll go to hell faster. That's the meter? Yeah. Wouldn't it be done by now? By issue 50, he runs out. Oh. Because, you know, that also is a tired idea, and they're bored with it by then. Okay. In, in, in the story, Spawn saves his best friend who married Wanda using that power, and that completely depletes him. Oh. Which, I like, which I like a lot, because I think it's... He not only uses up a lot of energy to, to cure his cancer, but also... It's a good act. It's like a selfless act, which I think would drain him even faster. So anyway, yeah, they throw that away in issue 50. Then like several issues of him being in hell and going through his trials, getting a new face and all this stuff. And then uh, he goes back to, he to, to Earth and then we spin our wheels until issue 100. I like that idea. The fact that if you're trying to use hell power for, for good, good, it uses more power. Yeah, it's like difficult terrain. It costs you two moves to get through it. Exactly. Well, and that's why he needs to run into like a sage character like Cogliostro, who was a spawn, who can then explain to spawn how to use his powers. Yeah, you know, he's got this like symbiotic costume, not unlike an alien symbiote from the Beyond the Stars. And he that, that has his own power. And Cogliostro teaches him, I believe in either spawn number eight or nine. To use that instead of his cell power. Yeah, to use his cost to draw power from his costume. So, you know, there's ways around the power meter, you know, like the, it doesn't use energy for your cape to help you fly because just, the cape flies naturally. I just never expected it to be like separated by colons or semicolons yeah, or whatever it's, it is. Yeah, it's colons, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's bizarre. I know, I know. I liked it. Uh, so, Angela by Neil Gaiman and Greg Capullo is a three-issue miniseries that uh, showcases Angela being in her own adventure, which does co-star Spawn, uh, but it also picks up and pays off all the dangling plot threads from her previous appearances. Yeah, where is her Lance? We never answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first question I had. But it is <laughs> the linchpin of the adventure. She's celebrating her 100,000th birthday uh, Yay, nice round numbers. Who doesn't love overly simplistic round numbers? Uh, and so she goes... You have to understand, this is the 70th time she's turned 100,000. Ah, I see. <laughs> so she goes to this planet that previously is established by Gaiman, is uninhabited except for, and then proceeds to name like all these ecosystems and creatures that live on this planet. I'm like, well, then it isn't really uninhabited, is it? The thing is, she wants to celebrate her 100,000th birthday by fighting a big, cool dragon. She's having a midlife crisis. More or less. Uh, so she had to pull a lot of strings and get a lot of favors because there's only five of these things left, but she loves hunting. That's what she, that's, that's in her blood. And so she, she's going to this place to hunt this dope ass dragon. And, this uh, dragon who has been alive for millennia. Yep, that of which there are only five. And so she goads it into fighting and then kills it and cuts its head off and then... And wears it. No, she doesn't wear it. And bathes in its blood. She does get its blood all over her and she will be caked in it for at least two thirds of the book. Nice. I mean, dragon blood is probably good for you. It doesn't come up. Or not. It doesn't seem like it because she's not made stronger by it, but 
she fights the dragon, and it's... Remember, this is also early Capullo, or at least it's early uncut Capullo. Capullo, of course, made his bones on things like Quasar and other Marvel comics, and then uh, did a couple of fill-in books on Spawn, and then was given, like, just a chance to really cut loose on this, you know, original miniseries, which, of course, is written by one of the greatest, you know, comic book writers of the 20th century, so pretty exciting times. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, it's also drawing or redefining one of the most popular breakout characters of 1992. Uh, of course, this is like 1993, so whatever. But uh, we are also treated to a costume redesign for Angela, which I think no one but Wizard Magazine could care about. Uh, but I, I bring it up now, because okay. we're kind of like showing off this version of Angela, which is some version like the Todd McFarlane design, but also- I remember that version. Oh, the butt version? Yes, well, there's no shortage of this, it's 1993. <laughs> So she kills the dragon, she cuts its head off, and she's like, woohoo, this is great. What a, what, a, what a swell birthday this is shaping up to be. Until she's interrupted by the authoritative declaration of a host of angels who are arresting her for treason. That dragon was three days away from her I retirement. Mean, yes, but it has nothing to do with that. It's just that it's more horrific that she murdered this endangered species for fun. She considers running for a minute, but then doesn't, and then they teleport her uh, to the City of Glass, where they are going to arraign her, and then she will face trial for these bogus charges. And we know they're bogus because we think Angela's awesome because it's 1993. <laughs> Also, they are bogus. Well, they except are. for the killing the dragon part. That that one. Well, uh, again, those are, that's not on the list of charges. That's no, just that, that's more of a moral failing that we, you know, are giving her. Is she wearing spawn earrings because that is the medallion she steals from the foe she slays? Yes. Okay. She yes. made them herself. No. <laughs> she just well, she made them into earrings. That's yes. what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Every. She upcycled them. It's true. Well, they're all just trophies. Everything that she wears is a trophy from something, except for the ribbons uh, that you see, kind of like flailing Those around hurts. her. I'm Those sorry. Are... Is is the chest piece a trophy? Well, I, I think. Was he... there a story before she got that one? <laughs> no, we, we don't see that. No, we're not gonna read that, Ben. <laughs> but all the Spawn stuff is just uh, is just left over from Spawns that she's killed. Okay. We actually see that she's killed at least two other Spawns, uh, but she brags about killing a lot more because of course she's over 100,000 years old, so, you know, there, there've been a few more Spawns since medieval Spawn and present Spawn, which is to say 40-year-old Spawn. Well, that's good because if she killed two Spawns, those are the only two Spawns lame. we know of, uh, that leaves us out of Spawns. I agree. Well, and there have been plenty of spawns since and before. But yeah, those medallions are just pieces of spawns armor, or, sp or spawns apostrophe armor. Yeah, no, those are, those are trophies. Yeah. I also love it. I just love that design. I love how Angel looks. Maybe just because, you know, when I was a child reading these comic books, it appealed to me for some reason. I can't really put my finger on why. But uh, I also just, I think Angel looks just looks dope. I love her headdress. I love the fins. And I love the spawn earrings. And I think that... You're missing something with those, with, with, by losing the spawn earrings. The spawn earrings, you should just pay some kind of licensing fee with McFarlane and just let Marvel's Angela wear those earrings. Because otherwise, how do you know she's Angela? <laughs> the big boot. Yes, the, the big- The one big the boot. One and big the boot. floating ribbon. Yeah. Yes. Th those ribbons, by the way, are essentially the heavenly compliment to Spawn's cape. Ah, like okay. Spawn's cape is alive, those ribbons are alive, the cape protects and insulates, the yeah. ribbons insulate as well. In Not Marvel. Well, no, they do very well. It's weird because they talk about how the, the ribbons maintain a consistent body temperature for her, so she's able to wear such little clothing. She chooses. She chooses, yes. Cool. Well, you gotta get, in Marvel, we gotta get these ribbons together with, um, Doc's cape. I agree. Oh, I, I wholeheartedly agree. It, because, you know, if you're if, if you're going to try to draw any parallels, get some red capes in there. Make it, and they could make uh, little capelets. She she gets arrested. It's all bogus, and then clearly there's some sort of plot against Angela. Yeah. because she doesn't make friends. Yes. she's not here to make friends. <laughs> yes, though she does have two friends. On the reality show. Yes. Welcome to Glass City, yep. where where uh, the bitches be bad, and I'm not here to make friends. Is it Glass City because they can all cast the first stone? Sure. But you best not. I, I think it's some kind of literary reference that Neil Gaiman's making. So Angela demands to know what her charges are. They say treason, among other things. And uh, she's like, treason, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, you went to Earth without a hunting permit and attacked a hellspawn 
and lost your lance. And she's like, uh, I did have a hunting permit. I did have permission. And I can't really answer that last part because yes, I did lose my lance, but. Uh, so it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like dread rules. Yeah. I lost my firearm, so. Oh, automatic fail. Yeah. So, yeah that's right. Um, You're I'm separated out. from your primary weapon. So then we cut to Earth where Spawn is moping. And whereas in a regular Spawn comic written by Todd McFarlane, it would be very melodramatic, but unironic. In this, it's Neil Gaiman aping on McFarlane, so his melodrama is funny, and Al has a personality. Also, there seems to be some sort of wrong or like weird weather phenomenon going on where there is an abnormal amount of lightning, mm -hmm. like a, a peculiar amount of lightning. A, a graphically exciting amount of uh, lightning. But like people on the ground should be like, the world is coming to an end. Yeah, um, I mean, it almost always is every day here in, you know, Spawn world. In Spawn yeah, Alley. what is the <laughs> what is the world that they're in? What do you mean? There's no name is for it, it. Are they in New York City? Yeah, New York City. Yes. Okay. So yeah. the people of New York are just like, ah, oh, we've seen lightning like this before. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. You take out one of us. You take out all of us. <laughs> the are, you, are you yelling that at the lightning? Yeah. <laughs> so Spawn is sad that Wanda doesn't love him anymore because he think because she thinks he's dead. So Spawn's sad. And he's like, I gotta stop thinking about Wanda. I, I gotta stop thinking about her hair and her lips and how much I love her and ah, oh, that's not helping. And her ribbons and her lance. Oh wait, that's a different person. Oh wait, no. Man, what, what am I thinking about? So then we meet Kwan Yin and Anahita and those are Angela's only two friends in the whole of creation. And they found out through the grapevine about Angela's bogus charges and that she's under arrest. And they're like, what? How, the, you know, it's just, you could, you could, you could, Fill out a Mad Libs of this yeah. whole story. Spy upon them. So they're like, what are we gonna do about it? They're staying at Angela's place because Angela has like like a cabin. It, it, they don't call it, they, they refer to it as kind of like a hunting lodge, but it's it just- It sure is. It's just her apartment or her estate or whatever. It's just a beautiful apartment. That's what they're drawing. Cause Capullo's like, I'm sorry, so what is it? <laughs> <laughs> they're like this. It's where Angela kind of stays, and she has trophies, but also like it's where she lives, and it's you know it's, it's both. It's, it's very modern. Right? But it's, it's modern, but also like she has giant severed heads on the wall, and he's like, okay, well I'm just gonna draw like a big weird apartment, and so that's fine. Yeah, it's like a New York City loft. Yes, <laughs> yes. But one of the big massive ones that's done really well. What yeah. happens with to the heads dragon on the head? We do get closure on the dragon head. No, she, we do not. Because she leaves it behind. You yeah, know? okay. And she was really excited to preserve it and put it on the wall here along uh, among uh, with all the other she, things. Where is she going to put it? Right. Well, there's we only see two walls. <laughs> okay, that's Yeah, true. there's there's room. There's plenty of walls. Maybe space. she has to take a couple things down and be like, which monsters am I removing oh. so I can put this dragon up? I agree. I agree. She's uh, definitely got to get us rid of sad two-headed dragon over there. Yeah, that's it, just a that's a bad story right it's there. It's true. It's a it's a it's a it's a bummer. <laughs> If the angels responsible for Angela's setup wanted her dead, they could have just as easily murdered her, but that would have gotten too much suspicion. They Instead, I'll just set Angela up. And she did legitimately leave that lance behind, which is the, the, the most crucial piece of information. Are they gonna just be like mean girls to her? Is yeah. that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. So Kwan Yin and Anahita go before uh, a friend of theirs in like the DA's office to help like lobby on behalf of Angela. Uh, they do not offer any help besides like the most basic amount. Uh, we see that Gabrielle is testifying, Gabrielle we know from Spawn number nine and 26, uh, who says that Angela went to Earth without her permission, did not present a hunting permit. Like everything we saw that definitely happened in Spawn number nine, Gabrielle is saying did not happen. So now we know Gabrielle is not on the level, even though we what? know that she's not because Maybe she's, she's also Maybe she's got a, a memory problem. We know she doesn't. It's, it, Gabrielle is bad news bears. So where exactly does Gabrielle fill in with, fit in with this mythology? Because right. she doesn't have crazy makeup. She doesn't have a crazy costume. She looks like she is a business person. That's because she is actually physically on earth interacting with humans, doing what looks like human stuff, but is actually inter-reality affairs. Like she is working on behalf of heaven on earth. You know, when Angela oh, meets with part. Gabrielle, she also dresses like a normal person. I mean, I wouldn't call that dressing like a normal person. It, it's 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 a little more, Yes. it's a little I less like that she still conspicuous. Wears awesome earrings. Those are dope earrings. And if you watch the Spawn film, starring Michael J. White, Angela has a like blink and you'll miss it cameo at the party and it's 
a, it's Angela wearing regular people clothes, but with big honking spawn earrings. That's funny, because like, I don't know how those earrings work. Right. Because like where her ears are, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's like there's a post at the bottom uh -huh. and then maybe a cuff <laughs> at the top. Yeah. We are meant to or think it's that just, I think that they they're so big they, that you can still put the uh, the central fulcrum point above halfway. Yeah, yeah and maybe. it still covers the top of her ear. Maybe she's got very dainty ears. Mm. Well, she is angelic. So we know that Gabrielle is our main antagonist of the story. Don't worry, we will see hot angel Gabrielle in this story. I was worried about that. I was sitting over here thinking to myself, not enough hot angel action in here. Yes. So Siren Yu, the other angel that was helping out Quan and Anahita facilitates the information that they need that there was a witness to Angela's uh, goings on on Earth and is a spawn named Al Simmons. So then while Spawn is brooding in Spawn Alley, or what would later be referred to as- He's not a rats, witness, he's the prey. Yeah, but- He doesn't know she has a permit. It's not like she was like, uh, by uh, permit number whatever, I'm allowed to hunt you now. She never says that to him, but he can explain at least what she was doing there. Okay, that's. I guess that's fair. So does that explain why two butts show up to talk to him? Well, that's the, 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 those, okay. those butts belong to those angels I just described. I so Annie Heat kicks Spawn in the face and goes, "We're gonna take you to heaven, big boy. Let's go." And that's our big setup for the second issue of Angela number two. Ha 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 ha. Then they're like, okay, so listen, Mr. Simmons, we really need your help. Like our friend <laughs> Angela is being arraigned. And he's like, why'd you kick me? And like, well, we had to get your attention. Force and of it, habit. And it's, it's Neil Gaiman being like- Believe me, we're, you had you, my attention. You easily had my attention. Yeah, but we also wanted to get you to look up. So we kicked you in the face. Uh, no, that's Neil Gaiman being like, I had to leave off on an action moment. There, were, there was too many talking. Mm -hmm. There was too much talking going on in this book. Had to get some action in there, even if it was on the last page. So they're like, yeah, we need you to come to Elysium and testify on behalf of Angela. And he's like, what? And then they teleport him up there anyway. Now, this is a big no-no because Spawn is and a necroplasmic being birthed from hell. Al Simmons's memories are in the body of Spawn, but none of that is human. The only thing that is human in Spawn is the heart that originally belonged to Simmons that was put in there, which will be pulled from his chest in Spawn 50. Oh, the physical heart. The physical heart, yeah. Which also, it's metaphorical, but literally it's in there. <laughs> and it doesn't pump anything, it's just sitting there like it's in a refrigerator. And so he is a husk made of necroplasm, which Ethan would complain about, but I'll just say it colloquially like we know what we're talking about, surrounded by a hell-born symbiote. But so why, like, wait, wait, wait. So he's he, he's a, he's an entire, he might as well be a demon. Like it is it is a bad idea to bring this hell-born creature to the realm of why heaven. Why would he have a heart at all? Oh, yeah, because he died? Because it's Like the, if he's it, just made out of necroplasm, like the heart shouldn't do I it. told you it doesn't do anything. They just they took his original heart from his old body right. and they put it inside of his husk. So it's just being kept there. It's like an idea, I guess. It's, it is, we could have put his kidneys in, but what do we care well, about that? The kidneys don't represent anything. They don't represent the deal he made to be in this situation in the first Sure they place. do, that's the filtration of the so, body. But like he has teeth. Yeah, but those are necroplasmic teeth. I forgot to include this other issue of Spawn, it's an earlier one. Spawn, when he first kind of like gets his druthers, when he first arrives on Earth, of course, all right, really quick, when Spawn dies, he makes a deal with Malvolgia, who is one of the leaders of the Eighth Circle of Hell, of which there are nine, and they each have their own different representative, uh, but Malvolgia is the one who loves Spawns, and comes up with the idea in the first place, and starts churning them out, and is hoping to use those Spawns to one day not beat Heaven, but rather to usurp other realms in Hell and become the true leader of Hell. Yeah. But he makes a deal with Simmons. Simmons says, let me see my wife again and I'll give you my soul, which is a terrible deal because Simmons doesn't think very much. And so he does and he sends him back to oh, Earth. Oh, you'll see him all right. Right, but he sends him five years in the future, but to Spawn was like a blink of an eye. So Spawn's on Earth five years in the future and when he wakes back up, he is already Spawn and we, you know, it's a superhero comic or at least it's trying to pretend to be one to get you to buy it in 1991. And so he gets thrown at a couple of fun action figure characters that are also colorful villains. And at one point he realizes who he is. Like he, he starts to piece his memories back together. And he's like, oh, I'm back. 
And I have like cool magic powers. Well, why don't I just use them to make me back into Al Simmons and then I'll just go tell Wanda to kick Terry to the curb and I'm back, you know? Yeah. Because I don't think things through. So he uses his magic powers and a, a significant portion of hellborn magic that is precious to him and keeps him on Earth. And he can only make himself look human if that human is a blonde white man. As a kind of cosmic joke. So, because of course Al Simmons was originally a black guy. So he looks like Ken? Yes. Well, he really looks like Patrick Swayze. <laughs> but yeah. And so you'll never be able to infiltrate or integrate back into your old life because no one will believe that you're Al Simmons. Well, well why doesn't he use ghost rules and tell her something? Yeah, that only she would know. And like lift a penny in the air. Right. I mean, I mean anyone he's not invisible, that. he'd just be white. <laughs> We're on Elysium. And the angels realize, oh crap, that's right, you're like a demon or something. Well, hell spawn. We have to hide you. And as they are trying to like sneak him to the trial, his costume starts freaking out because the costume is alive, but it's barely sentient. Like it only knows to protect the host. It doesn't know that like, we're, th this is kosher. So it's like, oh my God, I'm in enemy territory. So it's just freaking out. Oh, I assumed it hurt because it's like holy. Yeah, no. It's not like holy water on a vampire. It more is defending itself from what it thinks is hostile territory. So the costume starts changing and becoming more defensive. So he's growing more spikes. And he himself is becoming more spiky like in the hands and face and collar and stuff. So it's an opportunity for Neil Gaiman to make fun of Spawn's design overall, sure. but also uh, to try out new ideas about like how rad Spawn could look if we just added 12% more spikes. Uh, so we'll see Spawn get more and more sharp and spiky as the story progresses, as the costume gets more and more uncomfortable the longer they're there. Like a cat puffing up its tail, so they popping sideways. Exactly, so they sneak. Uh, or like what an introvert wishes they could do whenever they're in like a, like a, like a social situation That's for right. too long. So they sneak Halloween cat into Angela's sweet apartment and he's looking around <laughs> and he's like, oh, so like Angela was a hunter and this is her trophy room. Oh my God. And then he sees the Spawn trophy that's before here. He goes, so this belonged to a spawn like me, and they're like, "Well, not exactly like you. It was a, it was a fair amount bigger." No, and it's he's very like, different than what we saw he's, earlier. He's like, "What the crap?" And I guess the implication is it's like David and Goliath, where it's like there were other Earth used to have giants, <laughs> and uh, well, of course, and one was a spawn. And Are like, spawns only on Earth? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we don't get like alien spawns. Although, oh, 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 I, 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 I apologize. There are action figures called alien spawn, which imply that there are in fact alien spawns. But I've never seen one in a comic book. There's actually a really funny moment. And it's written by Alan Moore in which they talk about the Spawn program. It's actually a whole sequence because Billy Kincaid, the child murderer in the original run of Spawn, is killed by Spawn. And of course, where's his soul gonna go? It goes to hell. And so Alan Moore writes this whole issue about Billy Kincaid going on like a Wizard of Oz-esque adventure through hell <laughs> and then ending up in the presence of Malbolgia, who then turns him into a spawn and rolls him into the army. And just, he's just this big, fat, stupid spawn among a horde of other spawns. And there's a great line in there about how, uh, I believe one of the uh, Flebian brothers, that is to say, Violator had brothers that all have different V alliterative names that also are aggressive sounding. Somehow I remember that. Of wow. course, well, because we did that on The Good, Bad, and the Ugly as well. Damn. Violator and Venerator. Vindicator and yeah, Ventilator and stuff. One of the Flebians is like, explaining to Billy Kincaid that like, hey, sometime in like the 30s or 40s, we got a whole bunch of dudes down here and they were already used to wearing rad costumes. So they flipped for these spawn costumes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> like okay, yeah. Hey, we get our World War II spawn. Yeah, we got we we basically like an entire platoon of German spawns. There's nothing to do with this. I just wanted to bring it up because okay. how many times are we gonna talk about spawn on this channel? I like more times than I'd ever imagined. Exactly, but I really like spawn. Like the the angels are like talking amongst themselves, and he's like, "Hey, big guy, she got you too, huh?" <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, man. Like he's communing with it? Well, yeah, it was just like- That thing would have ripped your head off, man. I know. So then we meet up with Angela's public defender, whose name is Kalindra. And Kalindra is only 200 years old. Is she, um, it, it, like, is, is anyone like supposedly like average looking here? No. Okay. Tiffany- But Spawn that, does ask about that. Tiffany, Kalindra is like a two on the angel scale. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, oh, okay. But the but the, the the scale is admittedly skewed. But Spawn does ask about it. Yeah, oh. she's literally wearing Barbie heels where like her feet would be broken. Mm-hmm. So she's Angela's public defender, and she's new to this, and so she asks Angela what what's going on. Angela gives all the context of Spawn number nine. Uh, we also get including a butt, a recreation of the now classic Todd McFarlane depicted butt shot from Spawn number nine. Right. See it that gives, belt. It's a hazard. It is, because that's what Spawn grabs onto. Uh, hey, but at least he grabbed the belt. That's true. Not the and I'm glad that it maintained its structural integrity. But Neil Gaiman gets a chance to actually explain, because you, when you look into Spawn number nine, and Angela like hits Spawn with a lance, and Spawn suddenly becomes two-dimensional, and then the cape turns into a pool, and Spawn's in it, and then it's a shadow realm, but no one's underwater. You're like, what the, what the hell am I looking at right now? Gaiman's like, Maybe I should explain what you were looking at at that time. I've had some time and I figured it out. <laughs> it's been at least 30 issues. I can explain that now. I've done enough mescaline. I know the answer. Bingo. So Angela explains to Calendra. Angela explains to this baby. Uh, yes. Well, she and she's like. Look at her. She's like. Ooh. She's like, how old are you exactly? Oh, ex I, I just turned 200. She's like, oh, great. You know, because she's 100,000 years old. Also, don't forget, it's Angela's birthday. So she's having the worst birthday ever. But uh, she explains to her the, the, the goings on of Spawn number nine. I had my punting permit. I went to Gabrielle, I showed it to her. Then I went and attacked Spawn. Then I hit him with the lance. He got sucked into his own cape. Then he pulled me into the cape and then he tried to strangle me. And that was a new experience, let me tell you. It's true. So I got out of there and I was mortified by having beaten, been beaten by such a young Spawn. And uh, then she, and, and, and Kalindra rightfully asks, like, well, what happened to the lance? Also, don't you know how popular Spawn is? Yeah, that's true. And so Angela goes, I don't know, but I did file a report for a missing lance. <laughs> I'm like, who cares about this lance? But, uh, well, they do. That's tr it's true. Well, this it's is like, procedural evidence. It's yeah. about this is a missing firearm. Yeah, that's true. This so, is a heavenly procedure. Right, it, that's right. Well, the whole thing is just like having fun about the bureaucracy of the afterlife. But Kalindra like is like- law and order. Elysium City. That's right. Yay, nailed it. Uh, so Kalindra's like, well, Gabrielle says you never came to her and showed her... A, like, she says you you just showed up and went rogue on Earth. And she's like, oh, well, then Gabrielle is the traitor. Like, she's the one who set me up. Cool. All right, thank you. So Kalindra leaves, and then we go to hell, where the voice of God, the Metatron, goes before Malvolja and is like, hey, I got a ping. There's a spawn in my realm. And Malvolja's like... I didn't send any spawns, okay? I'm not doing anything. and uh, I'm not invading heaven. Exactly. We also get a chance to see one of those giant spawns in action. I know it's not, but it looks like he wasn't that big, and then when for some reason when he became a spawn, he became big, and he's looking at his house, and he's, he's like, like, Oh, I can't go in there. How do I fit in there? <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's where my food is. All oh, my no. stuff is in there. Yeah. Well, you get to find a bigger bridge to go under then, I guess. Oh, oh my God, look at how sad this spiky spawn is. I know. He, he fell asleep, and that was his dream. His dream was of the giant spawn. And he's like, oh. Yeah, and they're like, uh, Mr. Simmons, would, would you wake up? He's like, oh, sorry. I was having a real weird dream. And they're like, well, that's cute. You looked really sweet sleeping over there in the corner. And he's like, what? And they're like, no, nah, just kidding. You look like a fucking bunch of garbage. Anyway, get your shit together. We're going. And get your crap on. Boy. We're out of here. So they're like, change. Could you change what you look like? You, you look dangerous. So he transforms himself into the white guy. <laughs> oh. They're like, hello. <laughs> so they sneak him into the trial where uh, Angela then. Wouldn't his suit still be freaking out though? It is, but it's. But it would be his skin instead. So he's going to be like, nah. just, a, just a spiky white guy. Although I, I assume most of these women don't really care about dudes. No, there are no dudes in heaven. They're just like, whatever. Look at wow, us. that truly is heaven. So Angela uh, is asked to plead. She pleads innocent. Uh, uh, and we see Gabrielle go and give her deposition. This is Gabrielle when she, in her natural form. And of course, the irony being, she looks insane, but then they all do. So, you know. So Gabrielle uh, weighs in on how she feels about Angela, which is, of course, none too pleasing. Uh, and so then uh, Quan Yun goes to Kalindra and she tells her, like, we've got a surprise witness. you got to call him up to the stand. So then uh, Kalindra does call a witness. Uh, everyone, uh, the, you know, the host or the judge or whatever is like, this is highly irregular. <laughs> so then they, they call Al Simmons to the stand. Spawn is just, once he transforms back into Spawn, we can see how spiky he's getting. And he's like, hi, I'm here. Uh, I'm Spawn. And they're all like, ah, there's a spider! <laughs> get it, get it! Okay, they're all hunters. I feel like this should not be a problem. Now they're all just, they freak out. They're like, this is, 
This is like if a white-tailed deer <laughs> just showed up as a surprise witness at a hunting lodge. <laughs> That's exactly right. So Spawn enters thinking like, yeah, I got like diplomatic immunity or whatever. And they're like, no, the, the, the judge herself is like, there's a, there's a Spawn in our house, get him. And Angela is just like, what the, this does not help me at all. All right. So she jumps in and goes like, all right, Spawn, come on. So she grabs Spawn and leaves. Well, I mean, he's her witness. Exactly. Oh, great. Now she is a traitor. Yeah. So she grabs Spawn and they run out of there. Uh, and uh, so... Where are her friends? This is their fault. I know. They're like... <laughs> Gee, I who brought him, not us? Uh, uh, gotta go. Everyone get him. We were back at the apartment uh, redecorating the trophies. Yeah, just rearranging them. There were a couple of uh, trophies that I hadn't seen in the light of day in a couple of millennia. So... They jump out the window and they plummet and Angela tells Spawn, like, you gotta use, we gotta get back into your cape. Remember that Remember that time that you pulled me into your cape in Spawn number nine? You, you gotta pull me back into your cape now so that we can like not splat on the ground. Cool, uh, do you have a lance to stab me with? Right, exactly, because clearly that's how it works. Uh, but Spawn's cape does allow for him to teleport. It's, he mostly teleports himself, but apparently the cape can do that too. Actually, the, the cape is more of a dimensional gateway that takes you to hell, but we, we don't have to worry about that right now. So uh, it works, uh, but and thankfully none too soon because they're being sniped at from across the, the way by another, you know, angel. And so they uh, get into the Isn't cape. Is she getting stabbed by his body? Yeah, but I guess the costume doesn't deem her a threat. So my assumption is that when he, she gets near the the, the, the costume spikes, should definitely deem her well, as a threat. She tried to kill him right, last but time, but she met. is helping him out right now, and the costume recognizes that she's being friendly. So they get into the cape, and then they <sighs> uh, they suspicious. and they disappear. And everyone thinks that they got killed because, like, there was a big explosion of the teleportation, which they thought was like a, the the sniper shot. Mm -hmm. So now everyone thinks that both the Hellspawn and Angel are dead. Are uh, they not interested in the fact that there's no bodies? Well, they 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 were vaporized. Listen, by sorry, vaporized? A, bo a, a body can do that? Oh yeah, absolutely. So Quan Yin and Anahita are sad that they've essentially killed their friend, and I guess a Hellspawn, but who cares about that? Yeah, they don't really care about him. Nope. So. Uh, Spawn and Angela are now in a different realm, and it's complete darkness. Uh, and Angela asks Spawn to use his powers to create light, uh, but then he notices that there are some candles nearby, so he lights those up instead. And they have a little back and forth in which Angela's like, okay, let's assess where I am and what's going on here. Also, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, maybe we'll bang, maybe we won't. Yeah. I love Spawn going, hey, look, a candle. <laughs> she goes, oh, goodness, he's spiky and observant. <laughs> so he asks her if she's cold because wherever, because they're in hell. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, he's like, it's freezing in here. She's like, no, my ribbons keep me warm. And he's like, yeah, how's that, how's that work? And then he goes, hey, well, while we're here, why are all of you women? Are you like really angels? And she just goes, why did Malbolgia bring you back from the dead? <laughs> And he goes, I, I, don't, I don't really know. Of course, all angels. Our god is named Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> now, God's a woman, too, in this book. So Charlie could be a woman's name. So, he apo so, uh, so she apologizes for like being inadvertently responsible for dragging him into this adventure. Uh, he accepts her apology, uh, and they just kind of like wait it out. And now that they're in hell, his spikes have receded. OK. And so oh, they, good. It feels at home. Yes, ex it's exactly. So they, like, they lean against each other. And they're just kind of like, all right, well, I guess I'll just wait here until we figure out a new plan. And uh, the, the candles- here, I'll, I'll sleep against you and you sleep against me. Yeah, and we'll keep each other awake. And, and we heavily imply that Angela and Spawn hook up. You like, mean because her ribbons and his chains intertwine? intertwine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of cute. And she's like, you know, oh, and we also established that Spawn's cloak died. The it cloak died? The cloak sacrificed itself to teleport oh, it he and shot. Angela and took the shot, yeah. So the cloak is now gone. Forever? It, no. Well, that cloak is dead, but he'll get a new one. Okay. And that uh, one will I'll get be, a new cloak. A better cloak. Yeah. And it'll be less exciting because it'll be all torn and stuff. And that'll be the standard spawn cloak from here on out. Because we're going to start like adjusting spawn's costume. Like, like that one? Yeah, like that one. For spawn figure 10. Can you feel? <laughs> we don't own that. Oh. Love, all right. There we go. Uh, oh, it was a parody the whole time. It's spawn in a cave. And, and Angela. Weird. Yeah. And, and I love when he's he... also there with her ribbons. 
Thank you. <laughs> Magical, right? You really, you really saved it. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, hey, you're so welcome. You sure you're not? You sure you're not chilly? She's like, well, maybe I am a little, a little chilly. And you're just like, okay, what? You're like, are you a little chilly? Would you like some crackers for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, ah. it's a little cat demon wearing a tuxedo. His name me. is Smut. He's a little demon. His he's, name is Smut. Yeah, well, because he's a demon. You know, they're all named after vices. Or just words that start he's with got, V. He's got a little, like, birdie feet. Yeah, he's really cute. He's like a little, like, butler guy. He he sings a little song about, like, hell and stuff, and then he bumps into other, like, adorable or diminutive, uh, lesser demonic hellborn creatures who are, who are spying on Angela and Spawn, who are either done making out, hooking up, or implying they're about to start making out. The idea is that they are no longer hooking up, but instead are having like this kind of moonlighting argument back and forth. Oh no, his, his, his things are off. Yeah, his spikes came off. His, his mask is down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. Okay. And she didn't have much to put back on anyway, so. Leave it on. I, she's still covered in blood. Yeah, the dragon blood from, you know, issue oh, one. Know. <laughs> it's an aphrodisiac, you see. That's true. Probably. He's like, for, tastes like cinnamon. Him. You. <laughs> Can I get a latte with two pumps of dragon blood? <laughs> so Spawn strong arms Smut into explaining what's going on. Spawn, don't uh, you be mean to him. He's my favorite character now. Oh, he is me. Like, Spawn's like, oh, master, please don't attack me. And he's like, shut up, because he just won't stop talking. Like, he's talked so much that it's going behind the art. And Spawn's <laughs> like, quiet. And he's like, very well, master. I'll be quiet. He's like, quiet. And then Smut doesn't speak. And then Spawn asks Smut questions. And Smut won't answer them because he's being uh, a Told dutiful be servant. Yes, that's right. And Angel's like, he's not going to answer you. You told me quiet. And he's like, why is everyone so literal in this bullshit comic book? So then Angela asks Smut where they are, and Smut explains that they're in a hell castle. They're in a castle in hell, and uh, they can leave this place if they go through a special door, but there is a war being fought between here and the door, so they're gonna have to find a way through the battle to get through the door that'll lead them back to Earth. In my head, this is like a twisted, cracked mirror version of Beauty and the Beast, and it's just demonic versions of furniture and stuff fighting. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> fighting, of course, like Gaston's forces. Oh, naturally. <laughs> That's great, and I want that. <laughs> <laughs> So Smut explains to them that the, the battle is raging on. It should die down. It's been going on for a few weeks. It should wrap up in about a week. And Smut and Angel are like, we don't have a week. We need to get the hell out of here now. I'm sure you can find a way to spend the week. I, I, I think that they've spent all the time they would in a week, in a few hours. Okay. And now they can't stand each other. Ah. So they grab Smut. Ah, I see the dragon blood's wearing off. That's right. So they leap into the battle where Angela and Spawn both beat up or murder respective demons who are wielding weapons steal their weapons and then just start hacking up everybody that is in their way to get to the door. Which just turns them both on even more. Right, because any kind of extra dimensional blood is an aphrodisiac for the other's version of the gender. I just meant because they're both super badass and cool at weapons. Oh, I see. Yeah. So then Spawn is bitten by a giant a hell bat, which is a, a, a different name. So he'll turn into a vampire spawn. <gasps> it, it, I think it just poisons him and he's gonna die. <laughs> so, because uh, his shoulder starts hurting and then it's, it's reacting to the venom of the bat. Oh, and then it's like grows a wing. I wish it did. <laughs> uh, Angela calls it a vampire. And uh, that, that would be normally spelled with a V because you pronounced it with a W, but Gaiman pronounces it with a W and spells it with a W because it's a new creature that he invented. So maybe he's looking for residuals. Maybe we should call him the Wambulance then. <laughs> Are they gonna fight some war wheels? Oh, and while they're fighting, like the reason, clearly the reason why they brought Smut with them is to talk for each other. You know, like they're, 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 Spawn grabs a big ax and he's hacking away at these demons. Mm -hmm. And Angela goes, Smut, would you please explain to my brain dead partner that the ax is not gonna get us halfway through this thing because it's too unwieldy and big. And Spawn's like, Smut, would you please explain to Angela that I can manage my own weapons, please? And it's, I'm just like, what are you, what is this? Like, what are you doing right now? But it also is, more fun than I've had reading Spawn in several issues of real Spawn, so I'll take it. Okay. Just kind of like, okay, what are we doing? 
And I think Neil Gaiman's uh, like, I'm writing an Angela miniseries. Shut up. Smut looks after the castle. He does. Yeah, he takes care of the castle. Uh, he so, bustles. In his little pants. Yeah, he's got a little, he has <laughs> like a little tuxedo. I know, but I didn't, I didn't know he had pants. Usually you just see Yeah, that's true. Just this the is the cover bun. Yeah. So Spawn takes Smut and then plunges through the doorway. Angela and Spawn are separated. Angela goes someplace else. I believe it's heaven. And Spawn goes to she, Earth. She gets all glowy. Yeah. So Angela leaves. And Spawn ends up back on Earth. And Smut goes back to the castle? Uh, yeah, Smut does not want to go to Earth. And I think Gaiman had every intention of making Smut go with Spawn and be right in the rest of the book, but then didn't know how to bring him home. So he just had Smut not go with him. <laughs> okay, good. So Smut goes back to the castle, presumably. And Where's the Smut miniseries? I, any day now. I'm gonna I'm gonna quote that tweet. Where is the Smut miniseries? No! Capital S, 2023. <laughs> Comic pop. No! Answer all of the internet. Don't timestamp this. <laughs> <laughs> Already done. No. So Spawn bumps into a little kid. The kid's like, you wanna play? I want some candy? And Spawn's like, okay. So then we see that Spawn like ends up back where he needs to go. Kalindra, Quan Yin, and Anahita are at Angela's apartment and they're just, just talking about how great Angela was and how sad they are she's dead. Meanwhile, Angela teleports back into her apartment behind them, sneaks into her room, disrobes, and takes a long needed bath. A bubble bath. Of course. That way we can hide her nakedness. With her ribbons. Well, yeah, the ribbons are a part of her. Or at least they are alive and need a, a good washing as well. Okay. I mean, I would say her Clothes also need a good washing. Well, she's going to change her clothes into this awesome new design for Angela. No, those clothes are dead. They had sex with Spawn. That's right. <laughs> she burned those clothes. So <laughs> Angela Jennifer interrupts. Burn that man right out of my hair. <laughs> so, so Angela. Oh, that's why the belt's bigger. It, so Angela interrupts the ladies and their like impromptu eulogy for Angela with a pithy addendum. To which is responded by them in a like typical squee fashion, and also we get this full page reveal of like this is Greg Capullo's redesigned version of Angela, but we'll still have a giant big chunky belt. Well, of course, and one big boot. They're like, oh my god, Angela, this is wonderful. You're back, yay! So now what are we gonna do? And she's like, I am going to get my name cleared. And they're like, how are you gonna do that? We only have like six pages left of this series, and we've set up that like you're. You, th th we, there's this big conspiracy in heaven. Everyone thought you died. Everyone thought you died. Like, how are we going to deal with that? So, Gabrielle is in her office on Earth. Angela shows up and puts her sword against Gabrielle's throat and goes, Hey, explain to me why you lied to the host about my hunting permit and the lance and how I didn't report it. Like, because Gabrielle obviously used her influence to get that like missing weapons report ghosted. Mm -hmm. And so she basically just bullet points every charge against her and asks Gabrielle why she lied about it and set her up to be killed. And Gabrielle says, because I don't like you. Fair, I guess. Okay. And Angela's like, oh, okay. That was very honest. So Thank then you. Angela yeah. says like, I'm leaving now. And then goes to the moon where her f rowdy friends are waiting for her. So now Angela has incontrovertible evidence that Gabrielle is just a total B. Moon party. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's how it ended. Uh, but the, the girls are just like, well, now what? And Angela's like, you make sure that this tape gets to the judge. And so Gabrielle will get into hot water. But because everyone was so quick to judge me, I don't want to work for heaven anymore. Like, I don't I'm, like this. I'm a free agent. Bingo. Oh. I'm going freelance. <laughs> and uh, not to, no well, evidence on the, no evidence on the lance. You can't though. really be freelance. Right. Without no, the free sword. Without the lance. Yeah. So she's like, I'm going to go off and I'm going to work for myself. I'm my own boss now. Like, Angela's the original boss bitch. <laughs> what do you mean you're going to work for yourself? What exactly did you get paid in when you were being an angel? Well, originally she wasn't paid in anything. She was probably just set up in this estate that's like a, it's more like a, I don't know, like it's free housing for the job. And she's the best at it, so she gets the best views. But in this, uh, the job that she did will still need to be done by someone awesome, so Angela will do them for a price. 
So she's still gonna be hired by heaven. Probably, or maybe aliens and stuff, who knows? Don't you wanna read more? And and we didn't get any more. No thanks. She does have her own like mini arc in Curse of the Spawn, but who cares? Oh good, Curse of the Spawn. Our favorite series of all time. So then she invites them to go with her. Kalindra declines uh, and because Angela eventually gets wrapped up in lawsuits, uh, Todd McFarlane invents Tiffany, <laughs> a new angel who will do all the things that Angela would do, but without getting any residual checks for Neil Gaiman. Uh, what about Anahita and Kuan Yin? Yeah, they go with Angela. Okay. Or at least they- Wouldn't they also be creations of Neil Gaiman? Yes, and that's why we never see them again. What about G Gabrielle? Uh, another older but still curiously hot woman goes to Gabrielle and says, we've got this tape, it's not looking good for you, you're fired, and I'm replacing you. So we have a new older angel woman who has occupied Gabrielle's role and oh, Gabrielle has- Violator. I know, but Violator's from but hell. She, like, she, that chick has got a crazy outfit. I agree. It's very simple, it would look like that, but like that is 100%, she's like wearing full latex. Yeah, so Angela returns to Sandalon 5, the planet where she killed the dragon, and unfortunately, all of the indigenous species have picked the dragon's corpse clean, so she's left with nothing but- How long was the, it out there? Uh, not long, maybe a Five couple days. of days. You know, but there's a lot of creatures on here on this uninhabited planet. All right. And uh, so yeah. Also, dragon decays very quickly. I assume. Oh, okay. Well, except that they don't because we've seen that she has all these like preserved heads in her trophy room. Yeah, you gotta do that quick. Yeah. But uh, also, also- they weren't dragons. Well also like, I, she doesn't get to go back to that apartment anymore. That's not, she's not gonna be welcome in the Elysium city. No, but she's still gonna make new trophies. Maybe but where's she, she gonna is. keep them? Why wouldn't she be welcome? Gabrielle's gone. Oh, that's true, yeah. Okay. Hey, but does this issue have one more, uh, any time for a, a butt and boob shot of Angela? Of course. You mean the 90s special? Where a woman can stand impossibly in a position where we can see both boob and butt? Hell yeah. Oh. There's always time for one of those. I wasn't uh, sure, I just wanted to make sure we were gonna get another one. And I love the ending of this, it's just, it's perfect. You could just, you could hear the guitar lick and watch the end credits of this show where she says, there's a lot of work out there for a freelance ex-angel. And you know something? I think it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that as Wonder Woman's theme. But I, I would also be okay with a big Angela's theme. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there you have it, Angela. And Pirate Spawn. And also there's a story about Pirate Spawn who gives a crap. Uh, Angela, we'll never do that again, or anything like it. That's so, not true. Oh yeah. We could yeah. do a Marvel Angela we could do an time. Marvel Angela is always on the table. There's Witch Hunter Angela, there's 1602 Angela, there's Angela. Those uh, I liked. Asgardian Assassin, there's. Uh, Angela Lansbury. Yeah. Yeah, a little different, but you know, still same wheelhouse. Powerful women. But we'll see you guys next week with another episode of Backish. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry, I'm Buh. And I'm Tuh. <laughs> and I'm Suh. I don't want you to get me confused with uh, the. Yeah, the angel. Be, the would be usurper to Angela. Yes, yes, the the the, uh, the seraphim uh, Tiffany. Yeah. yeah no. We have an action figure of her. Yeah, we do. Someone sent it to us. Where are your ribbons? Keeping you warm. Here, hang on. We'll get you to our royal dresser. Nope. And we'll get you your outfit. I'm going home. Where's your boot? Nope. No, thank you. Can you imagine them trying to do the same thing to us? What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> they they kick us out. No men allowed in heaven. I mean, unless we're you know being summoned to bear to testify. To a trial. Yeah, that's true. They tell me I look like a potty clown. <laughs> <laughs>